I'm going to I'm going to make yeah. the uh, the pasta sauce this you morning. Doing, <laughs> Good to see you. Buddy Cianci isn't just selling pasta sauce today. He's selling himself as mayor of Providence, Rhode Island, yet again. Did all these gentlemen show up here for you? I, I think they're all, uh, yeah, I, I, they're here every day, I think. You a supporter of his? Yes. Absolutely. Cianci's good at running for mayor. He's been elected six times before. You want me to shake in that a little yeah, bit? Yeah, go ahead, open us out here. You can do that. Okay. What is the recipe for a revitalized Providence? Oh, leadership, vision, and experience. It's simple. Okay. Whoa. The demographics of the city have really changed sure since have. the last mayor. Yep, they have, but not the ingredients in the sauce here. But, but at 73, this isn't the same buddy that left office in 2002. For starters, there's something missing. Why did you get rid of the toupee? <laughs> well, you know, I didn't feel a need for it anymore. There was no need to, to wear it anymore. What you see is what you get. And uh, uh, by the way, a lot of people say I look a lot better without that uh, squirrel on my head, you know? <laughs> and, and you did call it the squirrel, right? Yeah, I Everybody did. called it the squirrel. Yeah, I, I named it. It was my pet. I named it the squirrel. <laughs> but the baggage Buddy Cianci carries from his 21 years in the mayor's office may be a little harder to lose. I will support the Constitution and laws of the United States. His first go-around in City Hall ended in disgrace in 1984. The defendant punched him, hit him, slapped him, and kicked him repeatedly. After he pled no contest to assaulting the man Cianci suspected was having an affair with his estranged wife. And at one point, you know, he hurls an ashtray at the man. The man ducks and misses him. Pulitzer Prize winning journalist Mike Stanton wrote the book on Cianci. He tries to club him with a fireplace log. One of his aides jumps in and deflects the blow. Did you throw a log no, at him? No, no. I did pick up a log and I threw it in the fireplace. He insisted to me that he simply threw the log into the fireplace. Total, total fabrication. He actually tried to, to club him with he a log. He tried to club him. His public works director, I believe it was, jumped in and, and stopped him. There's nothing new about my past. No one's going to get a Pulitzer Prize and no one's going to get a, an Emmy uh, by talking about what happened, you're, really? you're, you're not going to get it. You're not going to get it. <laughs> you're not going to get it by because it's hardly worth. It's 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 not breaking news. So let those who say the urban education systems are failing today. His second stretch as mayor started in 1991 and ended in 2002 with a conviction for racketeering that landed him in jail for four and a half years. You will not acknowledge that you did anything knowingly wrong to put you in there. I will tell you that, talk to the jury, because the jury found me not guilty of all charges except one. And I'm not saying I didn't make mistakes. I did. Buddy will tell you they only got him on one count, but that one count counted. And racketeering conspiracy is basically you're masterminding a criminal enterprise out of City Hall which is exactly how the judge described Providence under Cianci, a criminal enterprise where bribery, extortion, and pay to play were business as usual. Cianci, a Republican turned independent, was released from prison in 2007. Should you have gone to prison? Uh, you know, under the system of law that we have, uh, yeah, I guess that you're supposed to do the, pay the price. Um, I've always proclaimed my innocence, okay? Oh, and I will do that forever. Let's talk about your record, your political record, not your criminal record. What are your proudest achievements? The one proudest achievement I have? Raising the self-esteem of the people of the city of Providence to levels they never thought they could achieve. Fair enough. Providence under Cianci in the 1990s boomed. Hundreds of millions of investment dollars poured into the city. A bustling riverfront district was created along with nationally recognized arts and restaurant scenes. Money Magazine even named Providence one of the best places to live in America. He does get credit for being, I think, a really good cheerleader for the city when it underwent its renaissance, because Providence always has been kind of the uh, stepchild to Boston, the smudge on the highway to Cape Cod, as the Wall Street Journal once called us. It's memories of the good buddy, that have kept hope alive for another return to office. I really believe in my heart that over the years, he's the only man that's ever really done anything for the city. Does it bother you that he spent time in prison? No, no it doesn't. Buddy's past isn't exactly out of sync. In a state with a history of so much corruption, it was once dubbed Rogue's Island. 
the crimes for which he was convicted. Mm -hmm. Are people in Rhode Island just sort of used to that kind of thing? Well, there, there, there is a bit of jadedness about it. I mean, there's a whole conga line of uh, Rhode Island politicians who have been indicted or gone to prison. Ex-cons have been elected in other cities. Is there another situation that's comparable to this one? Well, I think Buddy comes from this long tradition of, uh, you know, political rogues in America. I mean, you go back to James Michael Curley, who was reelected from a jail cell. Um, you know, Huey Long. Or um, Marion Barry. And Marion Barry, who are reelected. Thank you very much. Do you think that a little bit of funny business behind the scenes is inevitable in city government? I think in this day and age, and especially with me, of where I've been and what I've been through and what the experience I've had, no, I don't think that's that's allowable. I don't think that's necessary to run a government. You think zero tolerance? Yeah, zero, absolutely zero tolerance. It's possible. Yeah, because I'm not doing this to go back to jail. I'm doing it, and I know I'm going to be one of the closely, closest watched uh, administrations probably in American history. I mean, if they find anything wrong with me, they'll send those SEAL Team 6 in. <laughs> CNC's Democratic opponent, Jorge Elorza, hopes CNC never gets the chance to redeem himself. So is this your first campaign for mayor? This is my first campaign for mayor. I was a judge for the past four years, and so I stepped down to launch the campaign. It's been a great experience. A recent poll has Elorza comfortably ahead. You know, it's been about 24 years since he ran a competitive race. And, uh, you know, frankly, demographically, the city has changed since then but also the sensibilities in the city. You know, we don't want to return back to the pay-to-play politics of the past. Buddy Cianci is you. Cianci's best hope may be that voters remember Providence's glory days. His only other hope may well be divine Providence. Do you think he's gonna win? I don't know that he will win. He, I think he has an uphill battle. The math is against him. This is his life, the city of Providence. But people always say, don't count Buddy Cianci out. This is what he's invested in. That's why his one man.